morning everyone. I'm German, I'm an engineer, and I'm gonna talk about Industry 4.0. That's pretty much a stereotype and I'm very sorry for that. But uh, let's start maybe with a little experiment to get you all wake up. Um, can I see your smartphones, please? Like, I think every one of you has a smartphone in his pocket. Just make it, turn it on like this, show me the display. Yeah, I think we have some more in here. Yeah, perfect, okay. So now, next step, you go in and unlock it, please. Did everyone unlock its smartphone? And now we swap it with our neighbor. Just take my smartphone. No, no, take it. And I take yours. So how, how does that feel? I mean, we talked a lot about transparency and uh, yeah, now I have a new smartphone, I can go around. How does that feel? Yeah, it's, it's quite special, right? Um, and I mean, I don't want you to do that now because that would be kind of private, but all of you guys also know where the mail account is in that smartphone, right? Okay, but that's enough. We'll swap back. Just to have that feeling, and I mean, we talked a lot about usability and transparency, so I think there are two key messages within this experiment. The one is transparency is something that we should think about, also in fashion of privacy and transparency. There are always the two ways, and we need both of them. And the other thing is usability, and this is something that I also want to emphasize on this. You all got a smartphone from someone else but you were able to access all kind of information because there is a standardized way of usability of a smartphone. And this is pretty much what is missing today in the world of textile. And this is why we had these great talks yesterday of how can we get information out of the textile process chain for the future. So I want to start with a little story to uh, keep you close to the human. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that. This was the landing of a Boeing within the Hudson River by a pilot called Sully. Um, and Sully got sued for that action, actually, because he decided that it would be the only and the best choice, but he decided it from here to land on the Hudson River. Afterwards, he got sued for it because they proved on simulators that he would have been able to fly back to the airport. But what came out of this is that uh, the court gave him the right, that he made a right decision on his knowledge and also on his savoir faire. And uh, at the end, also the press gave him the right, that he did the right decision, no one died on that accident. And I want to keep you that in mind while I talk about engineering and machines, that uh, humans are very important in this case. So if we talk about Industry 4.0, the usual question is, yeah, what is this force industrial revolution? And uh, the first time I got asked this question, it was a professor from Korea who came to Germany and he was like, yeah, David, okay, first one I know, steam-powered machines. Uh, power loom by Edmund Cartwright. Yeah, Germans somehow stole some ideas from the UK and yeah, had some good industrial revolutions out of that. Okay, this was the first industrial revolution, second industrial revolution, most of us know as well. It's uh, usually combined with the Ford assembly line, but actually it was invented in a slaughterhouse in uh, Cincinnati, um, where workers emphasized on doing always the same work, and it increased efficiency dramatically. So now what we call the third industrial revolution is, is not really clear and this is also why a lot of people don't get the fourth one. The third one came with the computers. So first wave of digitalization, we have this very big computer, it's called Zeus' Z3, it was the first computer running in 1941 I think, but in 1975 we have the miniaturization of these computers, we got logic control system and these were very very important for uh, automation of our production facilities. But what did we do with all of this knowledge being about productivity, efficiency and automation within textile industry the last 40 years? Uh, it's pretty much a shame. 
We were looking for the cheapest labor because automation was only 8%. So we got all our production overseas or a major amount of it. This is why textile industry in Germany, but as well in Italy, all over Europe, and very slow in garment. And uh, then we got a huge production chain in East Asia. Now we had a logistic problem. We needed to produce a lot, a lot, a lot of garments, stock them and bring them then to the end customer. And this is why we had productions like HMM or others having huge amounts of clothes produced, bringing them all to an end customer. They can choose and after it, maybe we have to throw away 50%. But the question is, what is going to be the future? What is this fourth industrial revolution? What is it about? I mean, you all know this from uh, former days. This was a nice way of listening to music and it's somehow hipster-like coming back to us because we still like this analog way of listening to music. But the internet got us Spotify. It's way easier to use, new service model. Uh, also new business model, uh, it makes even a lot more money than the old ones, so um, this is the first one. Second one, yeah, for video, we know it for sure, we all had these uh, 20 years ago, but now, yeah, the next thing is Netflix, probably everyone here in the room uses it. But talking about efficiency and productivity, if we see now the internet coming into our daily life, is it really more efficient uh, listening to Spotify, being on Facebook while working? I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't say so. But uh, yeah, getting this internet into production could change this. This is how the fault line looked like. And uh, this is pretty much what uh, Volkswagen concern Audi production line looks like today. They raised automation by a cooperation of robots with humans uh, by, from 8% to 25-30%. Um, and the humans just working in this line, the workers just got new jobs. But uh, yeah, in the next uh, 10 minutes I want to show you some example how this could look like for the textile industry. So summarizing industry 4.0. It's putting digital applications in production and for sure the integration of artificial intelligence. So our workers will also need to have a new skill set. Um, we will talk about uh, activities, uh, qualification, learning for the first, the second and the third industrial revolution. And we will have to see what the fourth industrial revolution will tell us about these new activities, qualifications and learnings. So my major question is how does this workplace that we know until now, how does our work of all of us in the textile business change in the digital age? Um, and I want to show you for this three examples of projects that we did at the institute in Germany where I'm working at. Um, the first one will be about production. The second one will be about products and the third one about servicing, services arising from it. So the first one about production is a video actually of a project that we did together with the company Adidas where it's about bringing production from overseas of shoes back to Germany by automation, majorly automation but also by applying industry 4.0 principles. Could you please tune the, the video or make it very not so loud because yeah what we see here So actually what you will see here is uh, that it is a combination of robots working together with humans in that factory to uh, manipulate certain pieces but we have a high degree of automation included. So we have a flat netting machine that you saw in the previous image producing the upper of a textile. Then we have a fully digitalized uh, laser cut 
for an individual cut of uh, your upper. Then we have a worker placing it on a control machine. And this is now uh, quite a clue of how we work here for the thermofixation. And then these stripes are very important actually. It's not a design stripe uh, designed by Adidas, but it's made to individualize your shoe also in the way of fit and response while you're running. And this is pretty much one of the major technologies behind it. So we stay to a very normal process and just individualized it by sticking some uh, rubber on top of it, like you know it maybe from, from sports. At the end we still have a classic shoemaking, pretty much classic shoemaking process with the worker included. And this is how we can realize the production of a shoe within a total time of a day within a speed factory based in Germany or now the second one open in the US uh, with a mass individualized shoe at the price of a retail shoe that was before produced uh, far away in East Asia. Now uh, uh, second one, a second thing that you should think about is how can you digitalize products. And I'll explain you this one with an example of a company that I'm involved myself. It's called Intellimat. It's a startup or company based in Berlin. And uh, actually, we are reinventing our business model. Right now, we are also quite a young company, five years old. We are selling mattresses online. I don't know, you've heard of Casper maybe. In Germany, you have Bed Eins and you have Moon that I'm working for. And what do we do? You can go online, retail, online retailer, you buy your mattress, can send it back within 100 days. That's nice because before you had to go to a store, but that's not a real change. So what do we want to do here? Actually, what we want to do here is take Industry 4.0 to a comfort level. Industry 4.0 for us means that you have a lot size one production as you saw it before in the uh, Adidas video. To have an individual product produced at the cost of a mass product. And what we do here is a data driven uh, approach to have a very well fitting mattress that you don't need to feel back and by this and using new materials and production processes being far more sustainable and uh, also have a better recycling rate than mattresses today. So what do we, we how, how do we work? We integrate digital tools, so sensors and capacitors into uh, our cover. We can measure with that cover your sleeping rate, you can order the cover, you can have it at home for two nights, three nights, we'll monitor your sleep, then you'll send the cover back. Or you can go to a store and just lay on top of it, you could go to an IKEA, just lie on it for several minutes and it will just analyze your body and how your movements go on. Then the second thing is that we build out of these information a huge platform. And that is quite nice because before we were just a mattress company being retailer online. Now, if we use that in an IKEA store, we're going to get the largest database of comfort related data in the world because there is none. And then the third part is smart manufacturing. So moving away from creating foam at BASF or Bayer in a huge amount and cutting them down, being not able to recycle these at all, going into 3D printing of textile-like fabrics to be able to control compression rates at a local point and to build our proper device. And what is interesting about these new digital business models is that you get a new space in the business actually. So what did we see here? We have hardware innovators like Tempo as well known Purple Sleep Number, really interesting. We have price leaders like IKEA and Bet1 and we have process innovators that we were before as well with East, Casper and Helix. But now we have a new kind of data enabled hardware. We can offer a complete new product and we are data company, data driven company. So this makes us being at a very new type of sleep brand.
And now as a third thing that I want to mention is also a project that we did at Adidas for services. It's a local production of textiles. It's a very ambitious project because we did it within 12 to 15 months. And we opened what you're going to see now is a real store. We opened it in Berlin at the Bikini store. Uh, it was open for four months. It's closed now again. But uh, our... Do we have the video here? No? Okay, then I'll just explain it to you. Um, so, uh, for this one, we, uh, we opened a store in Berlin where you can go in. Uh, you can watch the video online, it's called Store Factory. And what you actually do is you make your own design by movement. So you go within a chamber, you move a little bit and you get your own design out. Then you go to a table that you see here, it's pretty much uh, a PD, uh, it's pretty much an Apple tablet. And then you have what you see on the right side is what we also wanted to emphasize on is this look and feel. So you have different models of knitwear that you can touch and feel and see the materials used. Then you choose it, you go into a 3D scan, have a 3D scan of yourself made. And then what is really nice, you press OK and the knitwear is produced in the store and you can just get it out of the machine. So you have a flat knitting machine next to it. We make a direct, and this was quite difficult, digital translation of your body and the design you choose. And the flat knitting machine will produce it. We will cut it out and then I have to admit you will go for a long espresso for about four hours because we still have to do the thermofixation. But uh, after four hours, the full garment has been designed, has been produced and is ready to be taken away from the store. And this is something that is pretty new. It will not come like this to our stores because it still takes four hours to be produced. What do we do if a hundred people come at the same time? Um, so there are major questions being asked and it's good that they are being asked but we need to answer them in future. And I think that this project gives a very good idea of what could come and how you could help to solve these problems. So now being at the services, I think we had this already, digital service changed our daily life product, but how will the services and textile industry change and how could industry 4.0 help all of you growing your business and what it is good for? Ah, there we have the video. So we will have a look at it because it's, it's nice and you see it, I already explained it. So this is a 3D body scan, now you sit down, load the design you want to have, press on print and over there you see the flat knitting machine where the project was stalled. You have the full garment knitted. You have to get rid of the ribbons and what we didn't show is the thermofixation process. Um, yeah, and then you leave with your bag and your clothes. <coughs> so, yeah, this is just a summary. So for services, it is really interesting. On the left side, you see what kind of problems we are facing and it's increasing complexity because the knowledge is growing so fast. And it's also the shortage of qualified staff. Because what will actually happen when we go uh, really into industry 4.0 and what could be a really, really nice idea for the textile industry is so-called redistributed manufacturing. So what does redistributed manufacturing mean? Until now, what did we do? I also emphasized on this at the beginning. We went to Asia or other places with cheap labor costs and produced a whole range of garments and shipped them. But we produced also a lot of costs with that. We had in the talk before, and this was very nicely described, we, we want to have something personal, and if we care about something that is personal, that is individual, it will probably also have a longer lifetime. So why don't we combine these both ideas and go with a mass production, but the price of a mass production into an individualized production, as you saw it for the Adidas sneaker, and then have redistributed manufacturing among all of us. 
Because the problem is, when we go back to Germany, when we go back to France, when we go back even to Italy, uh, we don't find the staff. 20 years ago, I don't know, or even 10 years ago, I was told, yeah, David, uh, go to an engineering school, uh, manufacturing is dead here in Germany. Uh, you have to go somewhere else to do manufacturing, but yeah, here in Germany it's that. Now we're going to bring all these manufacturing processes back, and I'm very happy to be here at the TCBL, where I see a lot of people with real skills in garment making, and I think this is going to be pretty much the future, that even big brands or others will distribute their work, probably with networks that we have seen here, like uh, Sketch or Sourcebook or TCBL, to local producers, and being able to really work together with the end customer, know their needs, and produce by uh, real uh, good production technologies at a low price and individualized garment. And this is uh, how we actually, together with the uh, McKinsey company, help people uh, to learn about these new production processes. And I would very much like also all of you uh, invite to our place in Aachen, um, where we actually built up a whole process chain uh, to show digital possibilities within the manufacturing process. It was that. So this is a new building that we opened uh, one and a half years ago just on this purpose exactly and what you see here is actually a production process where we can show you how digital uh, information can be used in a textile manufacturing process. We built up a whole line from the garment to the end product and we can go on any step of the production value chain to show you how you could use these new digital Without transformation tools to, to enable industry 4.0 in your business. We challenge your company's operating system. So this was it. Thank you very much. This is the human-centered innovation factory that we're going to open soon. And I would very much like to invite all of you to be part of it, to do prototyping at a space uh, in our institute in Aachen be member of a very nice, we call it arena, so we'll have ongoing challenges uh, three times a year where you can prototype uh, new products, digitalize them or produce them with digital help and then pitch these projects towards uh, our other customers or internally to make a startup. So thank you very much and this was it.